All right, so it's another super windy day out here at the shop. Today, I'm trying to mess with something that I've been meaning to mess with for forever. So I haven't done it because of the pain. All right, so Wagoneers and a couple other Jeeps, I think older CJs as well, have the really awful transfer case. Well, I guess it's not awful, but it's the MP229, but it is vacuum actuated. At least on the Wagoneers, maybe on the CJs too, I don't really know. So, that means it requires air pressure to engage four wheel drive, which I have none. So, my little four wheel drive, two wheel drive switch here does absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter which one I have it on. So, today I thought I'd decide to mess with it. I've been under the Jeep for like 30 minutes just staring at stuff trying to figure things out and it's kind of confusing all the schematics I mean they're they're not hard to read but it's just like I can't see what I'm looking at because everything's so dirty and yeah it's filthy and it's a piece of shit and so today that's what I'm gonna work on also my brake pedal keeps sticking to the floor which is pretty sick so try to maybe look at that I don't really know just, I don't know, we'll see what happens. So I moved back inside. I don't want a crappy quality video, so I'm gonna do it in here. It's really all right. So way up there, there's two lines running super close together. Let me see if I can get this better. There's two lines, and I'm sitting in the camera. Not these ones closest, but the one they're further back. It's not really focusing on them. Those go to the transfer case. Where is it? <sighs> to the Lord have mercy me. I didn't lift this thing enough. There's a little dilly back there. You can't really see it on camera, which is convenient. But that's where they go. So, I'm gonna try see if I can figure out if something's not hooked right. Well, I can't see what I'm doing. There's so much oil. Every what is this? Leaking everywhere. We've got issues. I think I mentioned earlier how I was having an issue stopping and the brake pedal was sticking to the floor. Well, I figured out my issue. Piece of junk. Alright. So, I've been sitting here. Ow. Just staring at stuff. For like 10 minutes, I think. I'm gonna try to show y'all. Someone may have an answer for this, but I'm gonna try to figure it out on my own before I finish this. But this is the shifter arm for the transfer case. So this is what that little arm, I don't know if you can see it. This arm right here, you can see actually it's four-wheel drive I'm not sure which one which direction is four-wheel drive and which direction is not so I think I might jack up the Jeep and see if anything spins if there's a way I can jack it up without dying when I'm under the Jeep so that's what I'm gonna try to do next all right so I've made a discovery so 
for forever my dad has always said this thing is not in four wheel drive even though it says four wheel drive because he looked or something like that I don't know it's been in four wheel drive always always been in four wheel drive so that's cool it makes sense so yeah so what I did I just pulled that lever back and forth so I might be able to rig up a way to make it actually off of a lever which would be better than the stupid vacuum stuff there's a guy that makes it he used to make a kit I don't think he makes it anymore but that's what I would like to do can't really afford it though at the moment maybe I don't know it may not be that expensive I have to look but we'll see so I'm gonna switch it by hand and go drive it to see if it drives any better now that it's in two-wheel drive so we'll see all right test drive here we go I'm gonna be so mad if this drives like a thousand times better. I'm also gonna be mad if it automatically re-engages back in full full drive. See, look at that. Boom. Not even a four-wheel drive light on. Oh my gosh. Let me get out of here without running over expensive RS30 or something like that. So I got it all up in the air. Everything, all the tires are off the ground. Nothing in the way of anything that moves. I've never done this before, so I've never, never checked to see if anything's actually engaged or not. So should have done this probably like two years ago. But I'm doing it down, so better work than that. Four-wheel drive all the time. Good stuff. Oh, cool. That's good to know. Definitely important to fix now. So, let's get to it.
problem was, or is, that it kicks back into four-wheel drive when it's when I manually put it into two-wheel drive. When I was driving, coming back from that test run, it kicked back into four-wheel drive. The light came on on the dash. So, and when I pulled it in, I hadn't switched anything yet. So when I put it up and turn, put it in drive, it was back in four-wheel drive. So that's cool. Now I just got to find a way to make it stick. Just awesome. Good stuff. All right, breakthrough made. I put the camera down for a little bit and started kind of messing with stuff. And all along I've thought that this, the engagement switch for four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive didn't work. But I was wrong. Because I scared the hell out of myself. All right, so car's still up in the air. I forced it into two-wheel drive. No, I didn't. Alright, one second. I'll test this failed. I forced it back. The two wheel drive is now. So I'm gonna show y'all what I discovered. Alright, it is in fact it's in two wheel drive, rear is turning, front is not if you can see it. Check it. Listen. There's four wheel drive. Does it sound good? No. Does it work? Yeah. That narrows it down to one error line, which I think is the yellow one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to chase the yellow line down and see if I can get it to pull it back out of four-wheel drive because when I flip the switch back to two-wheel drive it doesn't do anything like just completely useless which has obviously been the problem all along because I didn't know it was just kind of a useless airline so I'll try to fix that hopefully that does it so on the back of the the motor here there is a line I can't see it right now because I'm filming but there's a green line that is I'm assuming that like the return to put pressure back so it goes into full or goes back into two-wheel drive and as I was looking I was like well, where the heck does that go to well I'm looking right here and I don't know if you can see it there's green line right there so it just came apart, so I just had to figure out a way to connect them back together. Alright, just so you could see it, I pulled it off the motor. So that is the issue, see it's like completely snapped off. And there's like 10 inches of hose missing. So I'm going to run to the parts store and see if they have anything, because I'd like to not drive in four-wheel drive all the time. Alright, just so you could see it, I pulled it off the motor so that is the issue see it's like completely snapped off and there's like 10 inches of hose missing all right so i recorded this once and the microphone wasn't on but this is the piece this is um vacuum hose for windshield wipers and i just kind of slipped it in there and i'm gonna cut my length and then try to attach it to that other piece and hopefully it holds pressure for it to switch out of four-wheel drive. Okay, that black line right there is what I run from, had run from the top of the transfer case where they all connect way up there to the actuator motor. So hopefully it has enough pressure and hold on to there long enough to switch it to here. Switch it in two wheel drive.
I don't know. Very confused. Don't know what's doing that. <sighs> I give up. I'm ordering manual shifters as soon as they're back in stock. This is stupid. I'm gonna take it off the jack stands and drive it around and see if it just needs to be on the ground to go back into two-wheel drive, but I don't think that's gonna do it, but we'll see. I can see all the vacuum hoses are correct, but I don't know. This is a whole lot of stupid and really, really frustrating. But I guess if I can't make it work, I'd rather just switch it to something better. So I'll probably end up just getting the manual lever kit. It's like 220 bucks, which is kind of expensive, but I mean, I guess it's justified. I'd rather have some peace of mind. I literally just, I think we just cut a hole here, come through, but yeah, we'll see. Alright, today was a failed attempt, that's okay. I guess we'll just have to buy some new stuff and then come back at it when it's all here. So, new stuff comes in or maintenance stuff comes in Monday. And I think that's it. I don't think I have anything else on the way. I'm going to wait to see when these manual levers come in stock. And then I'll probably order those. But until then, I guess not a whole lot I can do that's very interesting. 